with us for our, our midweek uh, study. We're happy uh, to have you uh, in the uh, worship service with us tonight. I want to thank God for everybody that has uh, offered us music and prayer and uh, shared the announcements of the church uh, with you. Uh, we, we thank God and we remember always this is the day the Lord has made and we're going to take an attitude of rejoicing <clears throat> and being glad in it. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you and praise you for your goodness, your mercy, your grace. We thank you, Father, for your wisdom. We thank you for your power. And we pray, God, that you would uh, infill us with who you are, that we might walk in victory. And when we're asked about why we're so victorious in times like these, our response can be because it was nothing but the Lord who was on our side. Thank you again for being our God. Thank you for Christ being our Savior, your Spirit being our guide. And now as we turn our attention to your Word, I pray, Father, that you would teach us through your Word. Uh, inspire us, uh, instruct us, and direct us that we might live lives that glorify our Heavenly Father in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We are in the midst of this conversation about having dreams in life, and uh, each and every one of us <coughs> has a dream. Uh, we're in the midst of this conversation about having dreams <clears throat> and identifying the fact that dreams don't just automatically come to fruition, but for each and every one of us, as we begin to walk through our dreams, we, we find some struggles uh, in the midst of those dreams. One of the things that we have identified is that those struggles are normal and natural and that we are not a special test case by God that rather than just taking us from conception to concreteness, that he takes everybody through conflict in the midst of their dreams. So it's not just you, it's everybody. We've been looking in the Bible at a character by the name of Jacob and so I'm going to invite you to open up your Bible, if you will, to Genesis chapter 32. Genesis chapter 32. Genesis chapter 32. Genesis chapter 32. And we're going to begin looking from verse number 22. Genesis 32, verse number 22. Come on, get your Bible, open it up. Uh, go adjust your Wi-Fi so that your smartphone or tablet can take you to Genesis chapter 32, beginning at verse number 20, 22. And uh, this is what the Bible says. The same night, speaking of, of Jacob, he arose and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his 11 children and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream and everything else that he had. And, and Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. When the man said that he did not prevail against Jacob, he touched his hip, hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go, for the day has broken. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have striven with God and with men and have prevailed. So reads the word of God. Amen. Now, we're talking about the struggle behind every, every dream. Lots of people dream. Many people dream and have dreams. But everybody doesn't, everybody's dream doesn't come into fruition. Uh, they don't acquire or achieve what they dream for. In fact, many people don't even go after their dreams. And when we ask the question why, there, there are a myriad of reasons. Some people are afraid to go after their dreams. Some people are insecure when it comes to going after their dream. Last week, we talked about how 
our past can keep us stuck in the past, that things that happened in the past can keep us stuck there. Some of us don't go after our dreams because we are afraid of the coming criticism that may take place, the fear of critics and the fear of people having opposing opinions and, and, and opposing thoughts or negative opinions and negative thoughts about us going after our dream. Maybe I'm talking to somebody right now and <clears throat> you have a dream, but the dream would cause conflict with somebody else. So in attempting to achieve your dream, you don't go after it because you don't want the conflict that it would cause in your life with someone else. If achieving dreams was easy, everybody would do it. But there's always a price to pay, and there's always work that has to be done for dreams to come to fruition and to be realized. So as we began this study last week, we began talking about the early stages of how you, how you get into your dream, what to dream and where to dream, and then what to do with the dream that you have that God has, has given to you. And, and we're going to talk about um, how you identify your dreams and get the specifics of your dreams. But before we jump into that, I want to warn you that going after your dream is not going to be easy. Uh, there's going to be some conflict, some problems relative to going after your dreams. Uh, Dr. Martin Luther King said he had a dream, but his dream brought him in conflict with other people. And there are others that ha have dreams, and, and their dreams bring them in conflict uh, with other people, even as a pastor in this church, that if God gives me a dream about a direction for our church, I've got some folk that want to go with the dream, other folk that want to fight the dream. Sometimes they fight nice, sometimes they fight in an illegitimate way. But just because you have a dream doesn't mean that everybody's going to go along with it. A mother who has a dream for her family to go do something at night, and you say to the children, we're going to do this, and the kids begin to complain and moan and cry because everybody's not always going to agree with the dream that you have for your life. So we're going to take a look at the life of Jacob. Jacob is, is an interesting fellow. And, and the first thing that we learn is that God had a dream for Jacob, and he, he lays that dream out in Genesis chapter 28. So if you look at Genesis chapter 28, around verse 11 up to verse number 22, it talks about the dream that God had for Jacob. Let me identify for you what God promised in this dream. So God told Jacob, I'm going to be with you, and I'm going to watch over you wherever you go. But one day, I'm going to bring your people back into the land. Now, the problem with the dream is not with, is not with God. The problem with the dream is with Jacob and the issues that he's going to face in life. Jacob was not prepared for the dream. He wasn't ready <clears throat> for the dream. Uh, and let me pause and say to, to many of us, we think the only obstacles that we have relative to our dream is what is an obstacle that somebody may bring into our life. But the fact of the matter is, for Jacob, not only did he have a problem with men on the outside, but he had a problem with who he was on the inside. And some of us at this particular point in place need to stop and recognize that one of the reasons that our dreams don't come into fruition may have nothing to do with God, nothing to do with someone else, and everything to do with who we are. Jacob was not mature enough to handle a great blessing and, and the great dream that God had in store for him. God doesn't take the dream from him, but he takes him through some stages to prepare him for the dream. And many of you that I'm speaking to right now, God hasn't removed the dream, but 
He's walking you through some stages in life so that you can achieve the dream and enjoy the dream. So here, here's the, the first stage or, or phase that we looked at last week is that, that God is in the process of preparing us. And the first stage is what we called a crisis phase, a crisis phase. And so uh, everybody that has a dream has to go through a crisis phase uh, where we struggle with God and we struggle with other people. Uh, in the crisis phase, Jacob had a struggle with God that we'll look at in just a few minutes. And he had looming on the horizon a struggle with another man. And, and you and I oftentimes stop in our dreams because of the struggles that we have or the crisis phase that we enter into. You're going to have problems with God <clears throat> because God needs a worthy vessel. And in order for you to become a worthy vessel, there's some things God has to work out of you and some things God has to work in you. Now, I want to press down on this just for a moment because I believe many of us give up on our dreams because we think it's too hard uh, what God is asking of us. And we fail to remember that what God is doing is trying to prepare you on the inside for the dream he has for you on the outside. And if you don't have the character, the patience, and the resilience that you need on the inside, you'll never be able to achieve what God wants you to achieve on the outside. So, in Genesis chapter 32, uh, verse number 24, uh, we began to talk about this dream with, with Jacob. And so Jacob goes through the first stage, which is the crisis phase. Now, here's, here's the second phase in the struggle. The second phase in the struggle is, is where God tests my faith and my trust in his promise. God tests my faith and my trust in his, his promise. God now, in Genesis 32, is going to test Jacob's faith. He's going to test Jacob's faith, and he's going to test your faith. So it's one thing, isn't it, to say all the time, I believe God will get me through. I believe God will get me through. But then when you get in the heat of the battle... Then you want to give up, throw your hands up. You want to hold up the white flag of surrender. You want to quit because now all of a sudden it becomes a struggle. Even though you may say in your mind, I believe God will get me through, God will get me through, you really don't believe that. Listen to me when I tell you this and, and write this down if you haven't. But people don't change because they see the light. They change because they feel the pain. So I, I said it before, I said, you know, you got a young guy and he's mistreating his girl and finally his girl says, you know what, I'm worth more than the way that this guy is treating me. So all of a sudden she stops answering his calls. She doesn't answer the door when he knocks on the door. She doesn't respond to his letters or to his text messages or to his emails. And now all of a sudden he's feeling on the inside the urgency to do better. So he goes and buys flowers. Should have been buying flowers all along. He gets candy. Should have been sending her candy all along. He goes to uh, edible arrangements. Should have been going to edible arrangements all along. He starts finding romantic movies on TV to watch. Should have been watching them all along. Help me somebody. But he's now changing not because he saw the light. He knew it in the back. But now he's feeling the pain. He doesn't want to move forward absent with this young lady in his life and the dream that he believes that God has for them. And so keep, keep that in mind because many of us right now are, are at a crisis stage where we, we make the decision that I am going to give up because it's too hard to do what God wants me to do. In the crisis stage, God is dealing with your character. 
He's dealing with your personality. He's dealing with whether or not you will learn to be patient, whether or not you will learn to be resilient, whether or not you will learn to press on, whether or not you will be moldable in his hands for him to be able to make you what he wants to make. I wish I had more time with this, but that's what happens in the crisis stage. Now, in the, in the, in the second stage, which is the commitment phase, God now takes you through a test. And the test is in your faith, and he tests your trust in him. So let me walk through Genesis chapter 32, uh, verse 24 through 26. He says, Jacob wrestled with this man until dawn. He wrestled all night long. Stay with me. It's an all night long wrestling match. This is not a one round match or a two round match. Uh, back, back in the day when I was watching boxing, Muhammad Ali, Joe Frazier, Ken Norton, George Foreman, when I was watching boxing back then, they had 15 rounds. And uh, the, the regulation has changed now. They're no longer allowed to have 15 rounds. They have 12 rounds because 15 rounds was just considered to be too long in terms of someone taking punishment, and they felt like too many people were permanently damaging themselves with 15-round boxing matches. This was more than 15 rounds. This battle that Jacob had was all night long. Come here, let me tell you something. Because some of you are saying, ain't no way, ain't no way, ain't, ain't no way. But let me tell you this. Many of you watching me right now have been in a battle with God much longer than Jacob was in. Jacob was in a battle all night long. Some of us have refused to allow God to change our character and impose his dream on our life for decades. Some of us have been wrestling with God not just all night, one day, one night. Some of us have been wrestling for decades. That same character flaw that you had 10 years ago, you still possess it today because you think the problem is with everybody else. If just they would change, then my life would be all right. But God is trying to tell you and he's using the pastor tonight to say to you that it's not them. It is you, and because you won't change, you are missing out on your dream. And here's the other thing I want us to understand is that that is this. God gives you a dream so that you can not only bless him, but impact the lives of other people. You are missing out because of your refusal to let God change your character. You are missing out because of your stubbornness. You are missing out because of your lack of patience. You are missing out because of your absence of resilience. You are missing out on honoring God and blessing a nation of people that God wants you to bless through the dream that he's given to you. Now, the text says that, that when, when the man saw that he could not win the match... <clears throat> He, he struck Jacob's hip and, and knocked it out of, out of joint. Then the man said, let me go, for it's dawn. Now, <clears throat> he's setting all this up for Jacob. Jacob is worn out. He's tired. And then Jacob says, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. Now, that's an interesting thing to say to somebody that you are wrestling with, that I, I'm not going to let you go until you, you bless me. Somehow, listen to me, somehow, sometime, during the night, during the darkness, during the blackness, during the vast emptiness of the night. Somehow in the midst of that night, 
Jacob realized that the one I'm wrestling with is not my enemy on the outside, but it is my God that is right here attached to me. And then Jacob became aware that he was wrestling with God. This is no ordinary individual. It's God. And if I'm wrestling with God, then I'm not going to let him go until he, he blesses me. Now, ha have you realized that? Because some of you think you're wrestling with your spouse. Some of you think you're wrestling with your supervisor. Some of you think you're wrestling with your significant other. Some of you think you're wrestling with your children. But the real battle that you're facing, and it's been all night long, hasn't it? The real battle that you're facing is not with your spouse, not with your supervisor, not with your, your significant other, not with your partner, not with your homeboy, not with your children. The real battle you are facing is a battle with God because God is trying to manipulate and massage your character so that you will be prepared to handle the dream that he has for your, for your life. Some of you have been saying to yourself, you know what, I, I ain't going to change. I, ain't, I believe what I believe, and I, I'm just not going to change. God, what you want me to do, I ain't going to do it. I'm, I'm just not going to do it. <clears throat> I don't want to live by your rules. I don't want to live by your rules. I want you to bless me, but I don't want to live by your rules. I don't, I don't want to do whatever it is that you're asking me to do. I want you to bless me, but I don't want to do whatever it is that you're asking me to do. I don't want to make the changes in my life that you're asking me to make. I, I want you to bless me, but I don't want to make the changes that you're asking me to make. I don't want to be humble. I want to stay full of pride. I, I want you to bless me, but I want you to do it while I'm prideful and not make me be hum, humble. I don't want to love people who talk about me who run me down, who mistreat me. I don't want to love them. I still want you to bless me, but I don't want to do it with those, with those conditions. And at some point, church, you're going to have to come to a point of commitment to God and to say to God, God, however you bless me, I, I will be satisfied. Let me, let me tell you something therapeutically. God is not here. To mess up your life. God has no intention of trying to just mess up your life. That's not his goal. He doesn't want to thwart your dream. Whatever your dream is in your life, God is not here to stand around the corner and to trip you up. That's not his goal. God is here to help you accomplish and achieve your goal. But in order for him to do that, He's got to get you ready, you get you prepared to receive the, the dream and the goal that he has for your life. He's got to deepen your patience. He's got to increase your resilience. He's got to build your stamina. Now, I want you to notice something, and that is that God is wrestling with Jacob. We find out that God could have easily overpowered him. Uh, can, can I pause right there and tell you that while you're fighting with God, he could easily overpower you. And, and there are many people that we've seen in our lives that testify to the fact that, that God could easily overpower us. If, if you ever get into a real match with God, God is going to win. And he's going to win unless he allows you to win. God could have pinned him one second into the match. 30 seconds into the match. <clears throat> but when God uses a crisis to get our attention, he doesn't resolve it immediately. Some of us want change to happen immediately. And we've had conversations with people that have revealed character flaws for us, and we think that once that conversation is over, then immediately we are going to change, only to find out that two weeks later, we're right back in the middle of the same conversation. 
arguing about the same thing, fussing about the same thing, upset about the same thing, mad about the same thing, misbehaving over the same thing. God fought with him all night long about it. And, and why? Because, because God wants to make sure that before he brings his dream into your life, that you really mean business with him. And so let me ask you this. Do you really want his blessing? Do you really want what God has for you to come to you? Do you really want that dream? And God will bring it to you if you'll trust him, if you'll believe in him, if you'll be sincere with him. God, God's plan didn't happen overnight. Th think about this for a moment. What if God answered every single one of your dreams the minute you asked it? What if God answered everything you asked for the minute you asked for it? God paid his power bill. Boom. There's money. God paid my water bill. Boom. There's money. God paid my car note. Boom. Boom. There's money. You would begin to think that God was your personal vending machine. And you would become the most spoiled brat on the face of this earth. God, church, is not our genie. And, and, and the problems that we have in our life will not be solved instantly. We're going to talk next week about, about a confession that we have to make in order for us to be able to get toward, toward our dreams. And some of us are going to have to confess, you know, I'm not what God wants me to be. I am not what God wants me to be. The problem with that confession is some of us really believe that I am what God wants me to be. And the problem is with everybody else in my life. And that is not the case, church. Now, notice something else that in order for God to, to stop the fight, he had to touch the socket of his hip. Um, to touch the socket of his hip. And, and for the rest of his life, Jacob walked with a limp. And, and that limp was a reminder of a fight that he had with God. Can I, can I tell you, church, that when God uh, makes change in our life, there can be some pain associated with it. And the reason there's pain associated with it is because God wants to build our character. I'm going to say it once and then I'm going to have you say it with me. People don't change because they come into the light. They change because they feel the pain. Say it with me. People don't change because they come into the light. They change because they feel the pain. And many people miss God because they make the decision to give up too soon. Listen to what the Bible says in Galatians chapter 6 and verse number 9. <clears throat> it says, let us not become weary. In doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. I, I've come by here on my way to heaven tonight to tell you to hang in there. To tell you not to give up. To tell you that this is just a test. To tell you that I know it hurts. God knows it, it hurts but he won't put more on you than you can bear. I come by to tell you that phase one is a crisis. Phase two is a commitment. Phase three is a confession. And phase four is a conversion. And if you can make it from phase one to phase four, you'll be in the process of achieving and acquiring your dream. Here's the value in getting your dream. You bless God, and you bless thousands of other people as well.
Thank you so much for tuning in. May the Lord bless you real good. Maybe there's somebody who's tuning in tonight and you've never given your life to Jesus Christ. That's what church is all about. It's making sure that you have a proper relationship with the Lord. and You can give your life to Christ tonight and change your whole eternity. You can ask God to come into your heart, live in your life, and be your Lord and be your Savior, and your whole eternity will change just like that. Maybe you don't have a church home. We invite you to come and unite with victory. If you just call the number that's on the screen, someone will pick up that phone and you tell them, I want to become a member of that church, and they'll make sure that it happens for you. Maybe somebody's in the middle of a crisis and you just need prayer. You need prayer so that you can hold on. Prayer so that you can accept the change that God wants to make in your life. You just need prayer. Call that number and tell them, I just need somebody to pray with me. The Bible says, wherever two or more are gathered together in my name, my power will be right there in the midst of them. Or anything else that you might need, if you call the church, we'll do our best to show the power of God and to bring the power of God into your heart.